Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Using Creativity and Innovation in the Waste Sector. Thank you very much for joining us today. Two Degrees is delighted to have Simon King of Pallet Sock with us today to hold this session. Now, before we actually begin with the presentation, I'm going to give a few technical instructions for the webinar. If you have any problems with the technology or audio, please use the chat box on the right-hand side to send a message. Select Host from the drop-down menu, send your message, and then I'll get back to you. Now, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation, and we're going to hold a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. To ask a question, type into the Q&A box on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, and then press Send. Now, if you'd like to connect through your phone, please use the chat box to contact me for more details. Finally, a video link will be made available after today's webinar session. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our speaker, Simon King. Simon, are you there? I am here, yes. Hello, Great. everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in today. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of uh, a new product that um, we have begun as a startup company uh, about a year ago. Um, its major um, objective was to uh, try and reduce waste in the marketplace uh, as well as saving people money by um, introducing a reusable uh, pallet wrapper. Um, and I'm going to talk you through um, how we're getting on with that and, and why and how, if you have um, innovative products that you'd like to bring into the sector, you might like to approach it um, to be successful in their introduction. Um, I'm just going to try and uh, scroll you through now uh, to the slide system. Hopefully you can all see um, uh, the first one. The major thing from our point of view uh, was that you need to do research uh, into your customer. Um, not, obviously you need to know about your own product, but you need to um, do as much research as you possibly can so that you understand um, their processes as much as they uh, understand them themselves. Because only by doing that uh, can you find out the major problems that they may be facing. Uh, and obviously, you need to then make sure that uh, your product answers their problems. Um, but even that really isn't enough on its own. You need to give them something more, um, whether, whatever that might be. Cost savings, environmental benefits. I mean, in our case, that's both. And preferably, in your case, that needs to be both as well. Um, and you need to know the weaknesses, really, of the process and product that they're already using um, so that you can structure your offer of your new uh, product uh, in a way that uh, is appealing to them. So to use pallet sock as an example, I mean, the question would be posed as to why is plastic pallet wrap so universally uh, used? And the answer is that it's pretty obvious. It's, it's light, cheap, um, it's secure, it's easy to use, and it's flexible. Um, and therefore, we needed to bring in a product that could match all of those things um, and also add something else. And really, that's what we can do uh, using the pallet sock. For example, uh, most of you hopefully would be familiar with the way pallets are wrapped, um, and they can be wrapped in a number of different ways. The illustration that you can see in front of you at the moment is uh, for hand wrapping, uh, which is probably still the bulk of methodology for wrapping pallets of goods, be they tote boxes or cardboard boxes. And any of you who have actually done that kind of work, you can see the guy here in the picture. It involves uh, bending over, which uh, can risk um, back injury potentially. Um, and it takes a long time, uh, relatively. Hand wrapping, for example, can uh, you know, take up to one to two minutes to put it on and potentially up to 30 seconds to cut it off. Um, the pallet sock, in fact, is made out of a woven polypropylene material that many of you might be familiar with with regard to um, carrying sand for builder's merchants, for example, in big bags. And it's the same fabric as that. Um, and that's been allied um, to what is the real breakthrough um, using the pallet sock, which is the elasticated material that you can see between the logos in the picture on the right. And that is uh, a 50% um, a nylon and 50% lycra, uh, lycra being the same sort of material that is used in aerobics equipment, uh, and it's extremely heavy duty. Um, and it allows a, up to 100% expansion so that it can expand over a load, or indeed the other way, if the load's a little smaller than the pallet, can track down to grip onto it. Um, so there we are. It saves labor, you know, less than 30 seconds uh, to fit uh, by hand, um, and maybe one to two minutes by using stretch wrap, 
Now, it doesn't sound like an awful lot, but if you were wrapping tens or hundreds of thousands of pallets a year, then it can start to add up to quite a bit of time. Um, obviously, you've got additional reduced health and safety risks, um, no, no knives, um, no back strain, and it gives additional uh, protection for pallets in transit. In the UK at the moment, um, a lot of systems are now using what's called the pallet hub system, whereby instead of just uh, loading a lorry from one end of the country and driving it all the way to the other end, uh, it goes through a whole series of different hubs where the uh, loads are unloaded and reloaded onto a local transporter who takes it up to the next hub and so on. And that can, uh, means that loads travelling hundreds of miles can maybe be unloaded two or three or four times in the course of a single night. And in doing that, a lot of um, forklift drivers uh, who are being paid on time, and time is critical when you're delivering pallets, um, will be loading and unloading uh, pallet loads of goods very rapidly through the middle of the night. They'll have two forklifts working on the same trailer that will maybe spin round and can often uh, collide. Uh, the loads can collide with each other. And when you've only got seven micron thick stretch wrap, for example, wrapped around a pallet, that can easily tear open. Um, and the pallet sock, in fact, is, is 500 microns thick, so a, a magnitude thicker and is much more tear resistant. Uh, it's cheaper to use, obviously not in the initial stages and not on a one-off situation, but uh, if you are able to return these goods, uh, the, the pallet sock itself, then payback over one year is easily possible and the item can last for five years. So you pay for one year and save five years worth of, uh, of stretch wrap. It's green, uh, plastic wrap um, going only one way. In the UK alone contributes up to 150,000 tonnes of waste going into landfill, and, and that's including, it's probably that's a conservative estimate, and it's also including um, all of the recycling campaigns that are going on, which are now pretty extensive, as, as many of you would be aware. But coming back to the introduction of new products, um, you need to uh, deal with the negatives in a positive way. No innovation is going to be better in all respects, and you're as well to open up and be honest about that um, in, in the beginning. Um, but you, know, you know, need to make sure that you enhance, uh, your enhanced benefits of your product outweigh the negatives. You need to point out the negatives before your customer does, really, uh, and have thought about them and have an answer for what, uh, for what the negatives might be. And again, coming back to pallets off as an example, a lot of people don't hand wrap, for example. They will be using machines, um, and there are uh, various different machines from turntables that you can um, press buttons and have a turntable that circles around to wrap a load, uh, a pallet load, and um, all the way through to very sophisticated uh, shrink wrap and um, stretch hood wrap systems. And to compensate for that, in the case of our introduction of an innovation here, you need to compile a comparison chart which shows uh, your products uh, against all the others that are available. And I'm just looking at that. It may be a little difficult for some of you to see there, but what I, I'll talk you through it. And in the first column there, you've got hand wrap, which is what you saw in the first picture. The second, you've got turntable, where uh, a forklift truck will pick up a load, drop it onto a turntable. The guy will get off the forklift. He'll tie the stretch wrap onto the corner. He'll press a button. The turntable will go round and round and round until it wraps the load. He then um, ties that off, gets back on the forklift, lifts the product up, and takes it back to wherever it's going to be loaded or, or stored. Uh, auto spin is where you have a conveyor belt system whereby normally there are two uh, arms that uh, rotate around the pallet. Um, and uh, in that spinning process, it's like a robot, it will wrap the pallet. Um, auto shrink is where you have a shrink wrap, and shrink wrap is separate from stretch wrap in so much as it comes as a, a much thicker bag that is perhaps 100, 120 microns thick, and it's pulled over the top of the load and then shrunk down onto the load uh, by means of heat. And that can either be done with a naked flame or in a tunnel, for example, um, where there's a much more highly automated system. And the final one is auto stretch, which is quite a new system overall, uh, whereby um, a robot again pulls a stretch bag out over the top of the load, drags it down, cuts it off, and it runs on from there. Now, all of those are in competition with my product, which is pallet sock at the bottom here. And if you look at um, the control, <coughs> the, um, the, the control of the material um, that you uh, you have. 
then in, in hand, uh, sorry, the cost of material in the first column, you'll see that hand is obviously very low, turntable is also relatively low, the cost for auto spin is quite high, and the reason for that is it is coming on to the column three because it tends to use a great a deal more of the stretch wrap material, even if it's only seven microns thick, it'll spin up uh, around and could use 40 to 60 meters on each wrap. Um, the cost of material of auto shrink is medium cost and uh, auto stretch similar, uh, and the cost of material for ours is nil in the longer run uh, once you've paid off uh, for them. Damage in transit I've already mentioned, and you can see the difference there, very high, 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 and then low. Uh, the square meters per wrap uh, on a 1.8 meter pallet, you can see the rough usage there of, of the square meterage. Is it printable? For example, a lot of people now like to use their pallet wrapping as, uh, as a means of promotion so that when their products are in circulation going round and about, um, they have the logo and the name of, of the manufacturer. Um, it's free advertising. Why wouldn't people want to do it? Well, obviously, where you've got hand concern, that's just not possible. Uh, Turntable, similarly. Auto spin, similarly, these are all stretch wrap materials and they don't take printing. Auto shrink, you can print and it's, it's, not, um, it's available and can be seen. And again, the same with auto stretch or hood stretch and, and with the pallet sock. Um, if you look um, at the potential uh, down the line on um, <coughs> other items such as uh, reduced contamination, machine running costs, uh, then you will see again the calculations showing where your product, uh, in my case, is pallet sock, but in your case, you could make such a chart that equates other methodologies that would go along with yours. And, and this is an easy no, yes, green, green, red system that will show you which it's going on for. Pallet sock, for example, when you look at machine running costs, the auto um, shrink system has a very high cost uh, of um, running and buying the machine in the first place and when you incorporate it into the overall costs of the lot. Some of them can have top covers. That's not poss uh, possible with hand wrap usually, and it's not possible on a turntable. And of course, warehouse footprint per machine. Uh, there's nothing with hand wrap, but there is with a turntable. It's locked into one place in the, um, in the warehouse and takes up warehousing space, uh, and more so for any machine system that has to be um, ensure that your uh, warehouse is organized in such a way that you, you must go through that station rather than with pallet sock, for example, where you take, the, you take the wrapping and hand wrapping, you take the wrapping itself to the pallet rather than the pallet to somewhere else, and that reduces transport costs, forklift time, etc. And similarly, then you have a separate argument, which is about recycling on the carbon footprint, which is becoming quite sensitive for people. They, um, most people are now wanting to reduce that footprint, uh, and uh, they're able to do so by using our product as opposed to any other product that you see in the list. So that, that's a way of combating um, the alternatives that are being put up, uh, and it would be a good way if you have a new product to show all of the other materials that are available, all of the other processes that are available, and how you compare against them in a very simple format. Um, for ex uh, another, another example is, you know, they will come up with arguments like they're too expensive. Uh, and from that point of view, again, I've done the charts scenario with the same um, uh, five alternative methods. Uh, and there I've put cost of material per square meter um, or, uh, on, on each one. Uh, the labor time that's involved, uh, I've costed out labor at 10 pounds an hour. And obviously, in these cases, there are none because these are machines. Uh, the machine run costs, uh, and this starts to mount up on the machine element of things and is nil with, uh, with our process. And uh, then assuming that you finance over two years, um, the costs of pallet sock, for example, which will be quite high here, and that'll give you a total cost per, uh, per, um, per pallet load uh, on this uh, cycle. And I've assumed using, coming up here, that it's five days, two shifts, so roughly that number of hours per annum. And therefore, you can then have a total cost over a five-year period, um, uh, and you can have a total cost, sorry, over a three-year period here, which would be best and, and the worst. So you can give your uh, customers an analysis, a fair look at, at where cost savings are possible. And again, coming back to the last one, you have the, the carbon footprint element. Once you've done that and you've put together all of your profile, you need to pitch your innovation at the right level. Uh, and if your major benefit is a cost saving, for example, you need to approach the financial decision makers of your target company. 
finance directors um, or, or people with budget responsibility. If it's efficiency, then you need to look at um, target the operational decision makers, um, the operations manager or, uh, and other, other parties such as that. But what you need to remember when you're introducing a new product is you need to always involve all sectors of a company, commercial, technical, managerial. They all have to buy in to the biggest obstacle you have to innovation, and that biggest obstacle is the need to change. Nobody likes to change. No one. They like to come in. They know what they're doing, and they want to get on with it. So you have to give a very strong incentive to uh, make people want to change. That will have to be driven from the top in, in, in the main. Um, but anybody who's not involved in the, decision, uh, in the introduction of a new item is likely to oppose it because they don't understand it and nobody's taking the trouble to explain it to them. And, and it's vital that you get to all of those different people, mainly because nobody likes change. Risky, inconvenient, um, and there's no track record of success that you will have at the start. This is something we have faced uh, initially. So the conclusion is you, know, you need to do your research, find out what you're up against, you state your benefits. How are you better? How's your product better? Your process better? Show your benefits. Pictures are better than words. Uh, understand their fears. No, nobody uh, in any new organization you approach with a new innovation, somebody's got to be the first one, and you need to find somebody with the courage to do that. And that person is normally the top, top down. Organizations, they're all resistant to change. For the best chance of success, you need somebody that has a vested interest in making a success of it. And that will often be the guy who's being engaged on his profit and loss performance at the top. He needs to uh, look at your product or your process and think, that's going to make things better for me. I can save money. I can, I can look good. And, um, of course, that's what we all want to do. And then, after you buy, get his buy-in, you need to get a buy-in from the lower levels, um, uh, all of whom uh, or any of whom that might be involved in getting that product or innovation into, uh, into the new company and is in a position to obstruct it. There's a picture of, uh, of the pilot sock in, in, in situ and some of them being used. Uh, and um, I'd like to thank you very much for, for listening um, to me overall. Hi, thanks a lot, Simon, for the presentation and taking some of the time out to go over this. Yeah. So now for our attendees out there, um, we're going to be holding a quick Q&A session. So just yep. as a reminder, Type in your question into the Q&A box on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Um, Simon, I have a few questions that have come in, and I've actually typed them into the chat box uh, right. for you. So um, I guess we'll just start. So for the first question, has any environmental analysis been undertaken to see whether pallet sock is more environmentally beneficial? It would use more material per product in production compared to stretch rock. Therefore, what is the environmental payback? Right. Right, yeah. Can, can I answer that verbally, or do I need to type it? Excuse me, sorry, I couldn't quite hear. Yeah, sorry. Do I need to, uh, can I answer verbally, or do I need to type yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, just answer verbally right yeah. now. That's the way okay, it. no, no, well, uh, in, in ter as I say, we're, we're, this is a new and patented product. It took us quite a while to get the patent uh, um, uh, up and running, which it, it now has been. But the analysis that we've done has obviously been on, on our own. And... Um, it, it, yeah. It will not use more, more material. I, I mentioned there a, a five-year life period. Now, if you imagine that you're using, um, you're, you're using a pallet, um, and sometimes people are using them two and three times within, within, their own, uh, within their own operation. For example, they'll break pallets, rewrap them in stretch wrap. So that pallet sock could be used perhaps uh, 100, 200 times, and the multiplication of that 100 or 200 pallet loads of stretch wrap will be so large that, that you know, the, the environmental payback is almost a no-brainer. It's almost obvious, if you like. But we haven't, we haven't done a formal analysis of that. But what I can do, you know, if anybody's interested, I could give them uh, a weight. I know how much weight it takes. For example, one square meter of stretch wrap is one gram, and there's a million grams in a ton. Um, so you multiply up the uh, square meterage of, of every pallet, and an average pallet on 1.8 meters assuming a 30% overlap is perhaps eight, meters, uh, eight uh, square meters of, uh, of material. Um, you can multiply that up by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of, uh, of pallets that are used, and uh, you, you, can, you can get a firm answer to that question. Uh, I just need to know the numbers. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, for our next question, um, what's the biggest barrier that you faced when it came to developing your company and the product? 
Well, I mean, certainly the, the, the biggest barrier that uh, I mentioned it there at the end is uh, resistance to change. Um, people, nobody, you know, there, there isn't anyone who likes change, and nobody wants to be first either. Everybody always says, well, can you show me somebody else that's using it? And therefore, if you can get a flyer by, you know, uh, maybe uh, if you're in a group or something like that, having your, one of your own companies within the group get going, then, then that will be uh, a huge advantage. Uh, and without doubt, that is the biggest obstacle. Okay, great. So for the next question that we have, I guess this is just from a personal point of view. Um, how is it that you foster creativity in your team? Um, well, uh, uh, again, we, we, um, we, we try to uh, – we're not a very big team overall, and what we try to do is have a brainstorming session overall whereby we can all sit around and look at problems that arise, as they always do, um, in terms of uh, the materials that are used, in terms of market penetration. Uh, and group thinking is really the, the, the answer to that question, I think, overall. That's how we, how we foster it. And no matter how crazy some of the ideas seem, um, it's amazing how, you know, if you actually look at them, okay, some of them are all going to be thrown away. But sometimes out of really crazy ideas come some pretty innovative ones, too. Great. So we have a few more questions that have come in. I'm just going to go over these and then we could possibly close for the session. Okay. Um, so next question, um, oops, I just lost it there. Um, how, is it, how important is it to, in, excuse me, let me start again. How important is putting your profile, um, the cost comparisons, et cetera, together? I think you had come up with a few different slides on that. How that's important right. is that? Yeah. Well, I, I think that's very important. And, and uh, no matter how innovative you are, I mean, it's one of my favorite phrases. It used to be said that if, if you built a better mousetrap, uh, the world would be the path to your door. Uh, in other words, you know, a simple item, and this is a very simple item, but any simple item that you come up with that everybody uses, you know, if it becomes obvious, then everybody will use it. Well, not today they won't because they won't ever hear about it because you have a howling hurricane of, of, of data on the web um, uh, through advertising in, in, in every other format. And, and really you need to sort of um, shoot down every argument against your product or process uh, quite comprehensively uh, and logically as well, by, which is why I tend to use those charts so that um, whoever you're coming up with is aware that you've, you've thought the whole thing through and, and uh, have the answers to all their questions, really. Okay. Um, the next question. Can the product be used with slip sheets, or do you have to have wooden or plastic pallets? Um, no, you need a pallet, uh, uh, be it wooden or, or plastic, um, because um, it, 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 it provides the stability um, that, that you won't get uh, otherwise. Um, so uh, the answer to that is no, you, yes, you do need a pallet. Okay, simple enough. Um, we have two more questions to go over. So if anybody has any other questions, please put it into the Q&A box. Um, next question. How do you see sustainability slash environmental efforts and innovation working together? Sometimes costs can make it a problem. I guess that means when approaching the board and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they do work together, and, and you know we've had a split approach really to our um, to our marketing of this product um, because um, env while environmental things are very important, and you know, you know major companies are not just paying lip service to it, but at the end of the day, every company's in business to make a profit, and, and they will not use innovation, no matter how environmentally you know, friendly it might seem, if it's not going to improve the bottom line as well. And so it's not good enough, I don't think, uh, and we found this in the early days, just to say, well, look, this is much more environmentally friendly. It also has to save them some money. Okay, great. So now for our final question. I guess this is a future focus. Do you have any new developments um, in Pallet Sock in the pipeline, um, I guess incorporating mm -hmm. everything that you've learned. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, we do actually because, uh, I mean, for example, um, I mean, at the moment we've just focused on pallets here, but another area that, that a lot of companies tend to use, uh, many companies, um, I mean, let's just look at the supermarkets, for example, ma major supermarkets will take in product um, into what they call a distribution center on pallets. They will break the pallets out of the dis uh, at the distribution center, get rid of the stretch wrap, uh, then repalletize them sometimes and rewrap them and put them on the shelf. But where they're delivering them to their stores, they will put them into either two or four-sided cages, um, which are delivered to the stores on trucks. Um, some supermarkets are still using two-sided cages and then wrapping stretch wrap around the two-sided cage. Um, 
So we, we have made a, a much smaller version of the pallet sock, which you can just pull over a two-sided cage, and it allows access uh, over the top um, for, for delivery. Often these are to corner stores and things like that. So, so that's a new innovation that we've been working on recently and, and approaching various people who are still using two-sided uh, delivery trolleys. Uh, and, and that's uh, being, being trialed as we speak. Okay, sounds great. Sounds like an optimistic future. And I guess we'll be using the same uh, lessons that you just taught us today <laughs> yes, <laughs> to get all yes. that underway. That's right. Um, well, I guess that's um, it for our Q&A session and with that, the webinar itself. So I'd like to thank all of our attendees for participating today, for your questions, comments, ideas, and just being yeah. involved. Me too. And I'd like yeah. to thank you, yeah. Simon, for holding the session today. It's been really informative. It's been great to have you online here. No, well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for organizing it. Yeah, no problem. Uh -huh. um, for our attendees out there, the audio recording and relevant info will be posted shortly on the Waste Management Group on the Two Degrees site. So you'll find it there soon enough. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone again and uh, wish you a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks, man. Bye then. Bye.